Welcome, welcome brothers, welcome sisters, welcome to our program on target. And as soon as we open that program, you can pick up a telephone and give us a call. The number to call is 442-0175. You're 91.9, 91.5, YouTube, Facebook. Give us a call. Um... This week is Holy Week. And that is the most sacred week in the liturgical year in Christianity. And for all Christian tradition, is a movable, a very um, movable observance. So you could give us a call. We have a number of people who have great command on Christianity. They could call and tell us something about Holy Week. Give us some background. Give us some information about Holy Week. But you could also talk about Israel and Hamas, Russia and Ukraine at war, Grenada here, or any other issue. I don't know what we could do, maybe we just have to say, Haiti, I'm sorry. Our Caribbean governments have not been taking the lead on Haiti. I believe that the Caribbean government should take the lead on Haiti. Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, yeah, Mr. Pierre, good day. Huh? Yes, man. Hope you had a good weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. People are wondering why this government lines so. The reason why I feel the line... Every time, they, every time they come with some good ones, they come with a big lie. The people cheer them, the people crap them, so that they endorse the lie. Because I was listening to Jenny program, which is with, with Andy. And when they just come into government, if they say a crab, bring up, crab open a hole, Andy run and block it. But I, I never thought he'd have out. But you're, you're not born out in the flat. But he, he says something about he went to India and he gets some... some Factory, factory or something, so and uh, the Indian government offer him one million dollars, US dollars, and then he say, why is it? He said they are not calling back and say, Andy, the one million we gonna make it two million. That was some deep di di back at all. I, I don't, I don't. For what I know for all people deal overseas, uh, especially dealing international thing. Man, I just call you personally and tell you oh, I, that one, that one million we gonna make it. And the people start to cheer him inside them, so they say the people end up in the lie, so that they continue lying. So you might be more diplomatic than that. You can, you can say, Andy, I will give you, I will give, I, 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 that one million, I will make it two. That, 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 that doesn't sound diplomatic at all. That doesn't sound so sort of diplomatic at all. So he had, he, he, he had to stop that line then. They had to stop that line thing. Although we know they're endorsing it. So more people clap, they tell us, well, they, they like it, so we give them more. So take them up there. Have a good day. Yes, I agree with you. This, is, this thing don't sound as professional. It don't sound diplomatic. It more resembles Children lies. And that's one of the challenges we have with the National Democratic Congress. They are mature individuals. They're not youths. Based upon the United Nations standard, a youth is between 14 and 25. 14 and 24, 25 years. Most countries in the world consider youth between 15 and 35. The NNP expanded the youth age to 39. But if you're over 40, you're not a youth. The males over 40, and you know, I, I always say to people, don't believe me when I speak. Do a little research in your community. Go around and look at all the gentlemen in your community. All the married individuals in your community. All the people in your community that is progressive. All those that have a lot of children and final age. If you're 40 years and you're just making your first child, then you might make one or one and a half or two. But some of the most prolific people in the community had the majority of their children before 40 years. And they were married early. 
and you could have seen the level of success. So these individuals in the government is not youth. And they're behaving like 13 or 14 year old children that greedy. Never see come see. They were elected into office by the people and they deceived the people. They told lies. And they preoccupied with themselves. So they're traveling extensively as people who never accustomed traveling. They're behaving like wayward children that inherited money and squandering the hard working parents' money. They are very insensitive to the elderly, the weak, and disadvantaged children. They seem not to be paying any heed to the economy in this country. And the trend that they take, I wouldn't surprise if by the end of the next year, the economy starts to go in free fall. They're very fortunate. When they came into office, there was a lot of money in the treasury based upon their analysis. They was excited, a lot of money in the treasury. And that again, that even expression tells you about a level of immaturity. They're using government coffers as a supermarket. What do I mean by that? The Grenada Development Bank. Yes, caller. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Pierre. Yes, my brother. Good you. Yeah. Mr. Pierre, here is this, this paradox, right? So the housing up in Cardinal is developed and you have to go to the bank or water credit union to get your loan of what? $65,000 there above. And then you take up the bank. You're not paying everything to the to the, um, to the government, they pay the bank. Sure you know, fine, right? So they say they want people that didn't work in, they want basically poor people. That's what the energy more people on the radio say. Well, here is prior to the election of 2022 of June, there's a now sitting minister that was issuing bad checks. Couldn't get loan from any bank at all. They're no sitting minister. You understand the hypocrisy of this? This guy has been with a one that paid his life to back check of borrowers to pay. He was issuing back checks. And this year he came up by some election and he's quite a potential security. Are you kind of here? Mr. Tamar, good afternoon. Yes, remember that the Grenadian public was aware of that before the vote. Remember, the Grenadian public was aware of that before they went and vote. It was loud and clear about the economic stress of some of the individuals running for the NDC. Some of them admitted publicly of their dishonesty. But people ignore that. We always have to respect. Remember, in a democracy, is one man, one vote. And you have to respect the people. And you have to let them have their vote. So they voted the individual, although they were well aware of his economic track record and his level of dishonesty. And he delivered eggs to them. And maybe they say eggs is a good thing because it shows life. Eggs will make chicken. So the people who are aware of that, they take the necessary risk. My issue with this government is because they said one thing to the people that they expected to vote for, and they are practicing something different. They deceive them. They deliberately plan lies and executed in the most dramatic manner. 
That is my issue with the NDC. I don't go after the mistakes they make and the shortfalls because we know it's a green team, a brand new team that lacking any former experience. You notice when one of the senior members of NDC was speaking to reassure the public, he never said we have experience. He said we have the exposure and we know what to do to get money. He didn't say we have experience. He said we have the exposure. But my issue is the level of lies that the National Democratic Congress, together with the courts and the collaborators, sat down in a lab and make. They make those lies, and those lies was particularly targeting the people in the lower income group. They were well aware to win an election, you must woo the people in the lower income group. You must influence them. You must get them to vote for you. You must sell them a package. And they sold these people a package that was filled with deliberate, blatant, unrealistic lies. It was presented with such drama that our people accepted it, lob, stock, and barrel. That is my issue there. I don't go after the mistakes that the shortfall they make. And I believe this is the reason we have to educate the public and recognize that when you vote, when you give a political party your vote, you must ensure that that vote is in your interest. The people in the lower income group voted against their interests. The people in the higher income group in Grenada don't have a problem with the NDC. They are comfortable with the NDC because the NDC gave them massive tax breaks. They raised the price of sugar since in the 70s, in the days of Gary. The government came to the conclusion that we must control the price of basic goods for our people. So sugar, milk, rice, flour was some of the items that was controlled. Government provided assistance and rebate for people who fishing to encourage them to fish and to help to maintain the price of fish so that the people in the lower income group could buy fish. The health system in Grenada is, was, and still is relatively free. Doctors were sent to the different medical station and dentists so that the people in the lower income group would not perish. Yes, caller, welcome. Good afternoon, sir. How are you today? Great, man. Good, man. Very, very nice, nice. You see, lie is a lie and truth is the truth, okay? At the end of the day, you get in the power. That's one. But governance for itself, as you know, to run a shop is different from running a supermarket. Okay, and then running the supermarket to a major mall is a different. Now, governance have its own way of doing things. Now, that don't come easy as you think you may. A lot of us may have an idea. A lot of us could talk on the air. We can do this and them. Now, putting the idea into reality is a different thing. So, get there by saying lies is fine. And now, you see, you've been put to test. 
No, you have been failed, you. And so it speaks for itself. You know, the people themselves uh, who have voted across, they didn't think twice. You know, you go in and make a change of a government. Now, there is nothing wrong in changing the government, but you must give a reason. What is the whole log logistic behind changing the government? Yeah? We, when you ask for explanation, it was just the, uh, Dr. Mitchell has to go. Why he has to go, if you ask the question, uh, he did too long and he's, he's, he's too old and all this. That is, that is not a, a reason for changing the government. They have no reason. That is not a reason. You know? So the know the people have to face the facts. Yeah? I'm not saying the people who are there is not good. I'm not saying it in that way. But the thing is, lack of experience do matters. Yeah, experience has a lot to do with life. I mean, experience, there's no book that says, like, there's principle of business, but there's nothing stated that principle of experience. Experience come as you know, you're an elderly person than I am. You have a lot more experience than I am. I may have ideas, but you, when you take my ideas and you, and you scroll it, and you see the in-depth of it, it's a different thing. Yeah? So that is where we have the shortfall. In our, in our country today, people didn't think when they was doing the changes, yeah, that, look, we are going, but it was just through a heat. And now what we say, I think for me, is like we are paying for the hatred that we spread, and which, you know, itself is a sin to hate your fellow men. So God is punishing us. Have a blessed day, sir. Yes, caller, and I agree with you. And I, I constantly say to people, you were, we were hoodwink, all of us. But we were hoodwink because we was too bitter and full of heat. We had individuals from the National Democratic Congress for almost 10 years spouting out pure hate on radio stations. I remember six, seven years ago speaking about it, comparing it with Rwanda and warning a radio station was instrumental in inciting the genocide in Rwanda. And what we were doing in Grenada was unacceptable. Now it has bared fruit. Now it is a challenge. And it is principally a challenge to the people in the lower income group. Almost every action this government takes is counterproductive. Counterproductive. It is negative. It affects the people in the lower income group more. I wish somebody could call me and list them. Almost every action. And we constantly draw it out and appeal to the government. But you see, Tobias Clement, the opposition leader, pointed out that the National Democratic Congress is not an inclusive government. When he was asked about joining that political party, he said the government is not an inclusive government. So the people of Grenada invested in a government that is partisan. They're not inclusive. They do not represent the interests of the common man. But to win the election, they had to woo the common man. So they presented a law they sat down and planned, how are we going to get them to support us? Let us promise to make all of them permanent. Unrealistic. Impossible. So they had to back it up with legal assurances. They talk about the elderly. And they said, you should be getting... $650. They chastised the previous government for not giving you. And they quote the World Bank. They talk about the Imani. 
They said yes, in 2008, 2013, we made a political mistake. But this time, we're going to make you permanent. So they sat down and planned lies. So we have to bear some responsibility. But we also have to correct them. We cannot let that continue in the country. It's going to bring back our country. It's going to turn, hand. It's going to turn back the hand of the clock. The economy could go in free fall. It could contribute to high unemployment and social decadence. So we begging, we appealing, we presenting the discussion and hoping and praying that members of the National Democratic Congress who have any measure of influence on the ministers could talk to them. I have never seen that level of greed in politicians. Never in Grenada. All the politicians in the past must be saying, well, I was stupid. This government is going to kill volunteers in the country. Volunteerism. And let's try to keep away from the isms. But they're going to kill voluntarism in this country. People are going to believe anything I'm doing, I have to get a big money for it. This government has set up a sham board that manages the development bank. A sham board. A board without one iota of shame. And they're providing loans for ministers. This thing is so laughable. It's a disgrace. That one third of your ministers, more than one third of your ministers, under two years, is able to extract millions of dollars from a development bank. Yes, scholar, welcome. Yeah, afternoon. I was looking around today, this morning, I went into St. George and I was looking at, at some of the, um, the structures that you have around those small buildings that you, you talk about, the, um, the uh, vendors vending on the sidewalk and so forth. And uh, some of the reasons that you gave me for wanting to get rid of them and they could be projectiles in case of a hurricane and so forth, right? And um, some of them not looking very good, right? So in my mind, I said, talk about projectile in case of a hurricane. The Governor General's residence, most of this, whatever was on top of it, around it, inside of it, were projectiles during the hurricane in my house. The same thing. In your house, sir, most of your house went out as projectile too. So those little ones on the ground couldn't be projectile. So mm. don't give me that one. Next time I want to give me something, please, right? Don't give me that that they will be projectile. That is an that insult to our intelligence. Very much so. Yeah. If you tell me those, um, they're not looking good, okay, I'll, 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 I'll say, okay, fine. But then... There are some houses. We don't all have concrete houses around. Excuse me, sir. We do not all have concrete houses around. We do have some wooden houses around still today. Some of them today still have uh, outside toilet. I put it that. Some of them still have outside toilet. Some of them don't have running water. You, do you know anything about that? Some of those homes that we folks live in do not have running water. We do not have um, uh, flush toilets in some of the homes. So are you going to tell me that we're going to take them down to those without um, running water and without um, flush toilet? Are we going to take them down to? 
are we going to take them down because they're not looking so good and, and they need repairs? Or will you assist us in repairing them? And to avoid them being projectile in case of a hurricane, of course, the aesthetic um, need to be upgraded too. We need the place to be looking good. Are you going to tell me you're going to make the places look good, the homes that um, they need painting and uh, they need repairs and so forth? Are you going to tell me that you're going to repair them too? Okay. I accept the fact that you're going to repair them. Can we start with that first before you take out, um, prevent us from making a living on the outside there? We still want to make a dollar to feed our children. Okay? So will you help us to make a dollar? Yes? And help us to repair our homes. Let us, let us, and put in some flush toilet for us too, in the meantime, and running water. There are places where we don't have running water. Can you do that for us, Lisa? Thank you very much. Yes, this is the troubling factor. And I say sometimes we need more individuals in our country to analyze, to strip, to take on politicians. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre? Yes, my brother, welcome. Good day, good day. Mm -hmm. I also have present the day to day. Mr. Pierre, you're talking about like, I'm going to ask you one question. Yes, go ahead. Where's the other guess? Mr. Pierre? You want me to answer you? Mr. Pierre, listen to me. You're talking about the people in the Lagoon Road and in the Port area and okay, Mr. Pierre, this place are looking bad. You don't have running water, you don't have telling nothing. People sit down about the place, spin out about the place, and you support this kind of nastiness. Mr. Pierre, I can so believe a man has your integrity to support this kind of thing going on in this country. That part are, part are supporting nastiness. We have to be better than that. That will create disease in this country. Real disease too. Mr. Pierre. How oh, could you manage to support that? Mr. Pierre, in this country, you're talking about people who are homes and they are both homes. You don't take it out too. You had a government report for nine years. They don't do nothing about that. Nine years now. They do not know that. No. This present government coming now and trying to rectify the situation. And all the are you supporting those people and them? Um, they post it, they don't want to get nothing. Mr. Pierre, this, you saying that this gov the past government support poor people. That, that, that is the biggest lie I ever tell in this country. Mr. Pierre, the past government, listen to me, you work the poor and vulnerable people for 40 years a day for nine years. And you come and tell me they, so they support poor people? Nine years they work people for 40 years a day. I said, thanks to the NDC, my brother, they could get at least about 55, 60 years a day. Sepe, you have a good day. Yes, caller, good. Thank you. Caller, you forget that last week you agreed with me that six months was too short, you said a year. And I say, well, let's use a range between six months to a year. This week, you change your mind again. Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, Mr. Pierre, good afternoon. Yeah, man. <laughs> Mr. Pierre, you're taking the word out of my mouth, you know. Yes, I mean. Because I listened to the caller last week. I listened to the caller last week. He said, I agree, not six months. He said, a year. Right? Now, this administration made an agreement. They had a meeting with the workers on the port. Yeah? They had a meeting and they promised them uh, to, to erect a two-story building on Tantin right by the Pandy, right? Right by the pan house. They promised these people and them. Now, I don't mind somebody's be, somebody belated and looking horrible. They need to change. But it's not what you do, Mr. Pierre. How you do it. How you go about doing it. And then if you promise these people, you have to do something for them. Where they're going to go? Okay, you tell them, you give them 28 days to go. No, you say six months. The, the last call I say a year, <laughs> right? No, hmm. you don't. You can you tell them 28 days where you want them to go. What alternative? What solution are you helping them to give them to help put food on their table on their children's table? Some of them have grandchildren, they have to take care of they have to help take care of them. What what, what incentive are you giving them? What, 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 what how are you helping them to solve that solution? 
What are you doing? Why didn't you hold on another meeting with them and tell them, look at the act. Look, we're going to demolish that building such and such time. So we're going to dig but we're going to help you in the process. Give them that sort of hope. Give them that sort of assurance that you're going to help them along in that process. Yeah? No, the caller talk about the oil and gas. And where the oil and gas? Why he don't ask the, the prime minister and, and, and um, the former minister of finance who is investigating the oil and gas issue? Why he don't ask them about it? Yeah, there is oil and gas. The prime minister admits in a town hall meeting that there is oil and gas in our waters. He, but what he said, he don't know the amount. Yeah, and then when he tried to shift it and try to play politics in it. Then he then he didn't he didn't tell us that he called Mr. Gregory Bowen and kind of thing to help sort find out certain things and to help sort out certain things within the ministry. Yeah? He didn't find he didn't know about that one. No, he didn't know about that one. He could stay silent about that one. Or maybe we didn't tell him about that one. Yeah? They didn't tell him about that one. But he coming now and asking what's about the oil and gas. You know, sometimes them managers open them out, the color radio station, he will just open them out to push the NEC narrative and they forgetting the real truth. The real truth. Package your life, partner. Package it properly. But you didn't package it properly enough. We all, we all out there, we just pick up our information and we could bring you the facts. We could even tie the truth on you if, in case you don't know. We could tie it on you. Yeah. So then, why are you always calling the station and pushing your NDC narrative? We go and push it out for you, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. You see, the, when you see like a government in power, the government have a lot of power, and the winner takes all. They have nine in parliament, so they could pass laws. So we are not saying that the government should not bulldoze the people. All we saying be reasonable. And give them about six months. We are not saying you should mash up the thing or seize them or jail them. We're not saying that. You see, the NDC don't surprise me. I am not surprised at all. I'm not disappointed with the NDC anymore. They're capable of that. In 1990, the NDC fired estate workers. And after they fired the estate workers, some estate owners use the opportunity to get rid of some workers on the estate and dope them. At that time, the union that represented them was very weak. Nobody's quick. Yes, caller, welcome. We lost that caller. So I know the NDC. So what we are saying, we are not saying not to bull rosy people person. Give them reasonable time. 28 days is as if it's a machine gun you hold in front of them. Yes, caller, welcome. Good day, sir. Yes, my brother. Um, sometimes I don't know where to start because I like start to in the center. All right. Um, what I want to say is I listen to some NDC activists. And I realized um, one or two of the young guys was asking them where the jobs you all have provided. You know, I told them, tell them, go in town. You have a lot of, you have a lot of construction in town. Everybody asks for a job, go by town. So where we heading? That's like the answer. Go in town, you'll, you'll get a job. And another is gentleman. I want to ask I, more people is now taking early retirement. I want to know who advised this administration, which they're saying is better for them. You have 24 police going one week. You have teachers threatening to retire. You have all different members of the public service threat. When I asked why, what cause they so plentiful in doing that, the gentleman going to say, because of the pension. They hear your pension of everybody fighting to get a pension. 
I said this will be worse for the government. This must be worse for the government because he said he would never be worse. Because when 24 police go, they will get 24 young heads to come in, in this space. Where is the experience? Uh, the, so I want to ask, who advising these people? When you have all these people retiring, you say it's better for your government. So that way I really realize these people haven't got a plan. We haven't got no major project for St. Patrick East and West. We have two parliamentary reps there. What main pro project is going on in this, in this area? Nothing. Everybody going town, going town. Not just saying going town, it's not so easy. So town, St. George's is, is, is the main place for employment. The country. Are you got jobs in St. George's? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the truth of it is, is that the, the National Democratic Congress didn't have a plan to create jobs. And creating jobs is a challenge. That is, that is the reason the previous government introduced the money program that, take, that took over 3,000 people from their home and give them an opportunity to get money, income, a stipend, between $700 and $1,000, 3,000 people. That changed the, the, the dynamics immediately. That is the reason the government introduced Project Hope and Project Fly. Because you have high unemployment in your country. There are some economic schools of thought that says when you have high unemployment, you have to go around and give people money. So what government do they try to make jobs for you? And when the market become more buoyant, more dynamic, you would move away from these jobs and go to it. So that is one of the masterpieces of the money program. And I have said repeatedly, on many occasions, over the years, that the money program is the best program that have been instituted in Grenada in the last hundred years. The principle of the money program is not new. Some of the socialist countries had national service. The Imani program did not have a military aspect to it. But a lot of the socialist country introduced national service to keep the young people occupied. So the Imani program provided a young person that was home doing nothing with an income, with an opportunity to expand the education to get job experience and to help them to preserve their dignity. Yes, caller, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Peer. Yes, my brother. Good afternoon to Grenada. Mr. Peer, something realizing. The government are doing a lot of projects presently, or some of the projects presently, that funding was there for since in NNP budget. And they keep turning it over. For instance, the the ten thousand million dollars that they have from um, for they have for agriculture, that was from NMP. They put present two budget, and they use and they talk about the same money, same ten thousand, ten million. Today they not use the permanent sec secretary in 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 agriculture now. It's a bad one. Say that they were hoping to use up every cent of it. Last year, we heard that. We hear that now again. So that 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 funding is not funding that they had us look for. It it in the bank waiting. No, it in the bank waiting again. And and last year it was in the bank waiting again. So where are we going? 
Where are we going with those with those things? The the, the prime minister was at the handing over ceremony for the houses, and he spoke all about the niceness of the, the Chinese and the houses, and he wanted to move people from being poor to put them in in house to make them be owners of property and whatnot. All that, but he never, never in one word mentioned that this was gift given to Grenada by the the same Chinese. He gave the impression that the government, the government, his government now is doing all and he's doing that and he wants the people to live nicely and um, um Kola, you don't think the Prime Minister is a fake. Yeah? You don't believe he's a fake. Well, what I'm saying, I find it so funny. That you don't, he, Kala, he you don't believe he's a fake? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand him. I really can't understand what, what he, he matters. He, he, he puzzles me too much. Because, I mean, you meet a project, you go on with the project, you finish the project that was started, that was the fund was given by the... And now you're taking all credit... All credit, you forgetting you, that the condition that you give the, that you give that you put the houses under now wasn't the condition that the, that, the, that the, the government accepted for for the him. And and you have a minister sitting in parliament with you now who started who turned over keys to people already, turned over keys, and she's clapping sitting now as if it's the best thing that is done. The color she forget, she forget that she was the one that gave the people in Karakou the keys. I mean, what, what time foolery? I find that it's time foolery. Okay. Yeah, it's time foolery. You know, we, we're hearing that, oh, they have a lot to do in agriculture and they're using the Chinese place and the Chinese go to get them things and whatnot. The Chinese ho um, 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 farms and, and the Chinese um, development in, 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 um, in St. David's is not this government that bring it come? Color. Mm -hmm. When the government speak about agriculture, you and I are in tongue long. So we should be less excited by the NDC. You know the NDC have the worst shock record in agriculture. NDC come in power and speak about agriculture and they fire 31 workers in Grand Bay State. And they wanted to fire some in in um, in, in Monk to rule, you know. But I understand when we start to talk about it, that is why they cool down. They fired 31 workers. And they have the biggest not estate in, in Bellevue. Bellevue. So this government will no plan for agriculture. Color, you remember they say about mango going in Trinidad? And MNIB board with yeah. marketing board? Mm -hmm. They have no plan. You have a group of People like headless chicken preoccupy with GDB bank. They're robbing the pocket. They are parasites they on the government power, coffers. They change about three permanent secretary ministers because they're ready. Well, we, we might get a good one. They should change this bag one. If in the next two, three weeks, you don't find nothing going, they should change bag one again. They might get a good one. Remember the, minister, the previous minister of agriculture. The police said that Pridia Lassen is down 3%. You know, but he calling people lunatic and idiot. For instead of complimenting the, the people involved, the farmers, the people in Grenada. So I don't expect anything from NDC. When NDC under pressure, they just come in crime. You know. Remember they cut down the band and not make that come in Grenada in 1883 in Bellevue Estate. Carla, yeah. I want you to put your ears on the ground. Yes. And find out about the machinery in Maribu. When you talk about that, Carla, 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 yeah. forget about what they talk about. I encourage you to do research. Find out about it and then we go talk again. All right. I will yes, try thank to... you. Right. You see... People constantly saying the NDC talk about that. That's all they do. You have a group of people that telling lies as if it's a joke. They sit down and plan lies. Yes, caller, welcome. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Pierre. Yes, sir. Mr. Pierre, you know, 
I was someone in the system who used to work in the system with the toilet and bathroom as a supervisor in speaking. And we used to go, you know, from Victoria to Granant. And there were so many people, different people in that program. The government was giving that program to so many people. I want to compliment the NNP for doing that. There were so many people. I can remember old people, vulnerable people. Some of these people build their house in so much difficult place that when you go to dig that, um, these pillar holes or the trench to cast these bathroom and toilet and thing, and the septic tank, it was real something else. And I know these people are on their own could have never do that easily. And that program was a program that changes a lot for people. I can remember, yes, some people were NN NDC supporters, and they were getting it. And when you go, they may tell you, I didn't ask Keith Mitchell for it, and it's them who give me. And, you know, it was like a laugh to us because we realized that they, they needed it. 100% they, they had needed it. And they got it, even though their political affiliation or their political opinion were different. It was just a pleasure to make sure that these people have it. And... Today we see people saying all kind of things about the program and saying this and that. People who have no knowledge about the program, who never really, you know, mix or really knew the benefit of the program. It was one of the best programs the government had ever introduced. It was a blessing to the vulnerable people, the people who could not have afforded. It was a real blessing to them. And the way the government executed it, I want to give them high praise for that. It was never on the lines of, um, let me see, party supporters. Because I was a supervisor. And when I go to the different places, you find people saying different things, Mr. Pierre. And some people was not for the government, but they were getting it. And I want to give NNP that, you know, thumbs up for bringing out that program and executing it so efficiently. Thank you, Mr. Pierre. Yes, God. And I ask all year for people to call me and tell me some of the programs that was there. I know I'm going to list some. So give me one minute before you call. We had the Imani program. And I spoke about that. I always speak about the Imani program in glowing terms. You had Project Hope and Project Fly. You had the Debushin program. You had Caregivers. And I don't know where NNP and them come out with wardens. So they start with traffic wardens. And they had the health wardens and road wardens. And they have the caregivers. The government was constantly looking at means and ways to get people off the street and get them employed. And that is what you do when the economy is in trouble. You create employment. And as a result of that, the economy could rebound. It is not magic. That is a successful economic school of thought. You have this government come in. And over 3,000 workers lost their job, DV. Then the government raised the price of sugar. A product that government since in the 70s in Gary days trying to keep down because they understand the multiplying effect. The confectionery industry was hit. And then this government decided to attack hairdressers and barbers. Nobody know where they get this rule and law. But they implemented that. And then they decide, well, we want to have, so it seems as though the NDC have a plan to get a company to do something on the port. But they don't want to make it look as it's the port alone, so they decide to attack vendors all over the island. Now, while they are doing that, think they say money is not a problem. Minister after minister tell you they don't have a problem for money. The projections 
with the budget, the, the intake has surpassed the projection. So in other, way, in other means, the money they expect to collect, they make more. The CBI program doing better than they thought. Yes, scholar, welcome. Yes, scholar, welcome. We lost the color. Color you there. The CBI program doing better than they thought. So they don't have an economic justification for the unnecessary attack on people in the lower income group. But you see, over the years, they say the government was giving away money. They said they, they was against the debushing program. They promised to plant Kalalua road by the road. We didn't pay attention to that. So this government is mischief. And when I say they mischief, they introduce restorative justice. I have not heard one minister or any one of the goons from the NDC justify the necessity for introducing restorative justice. Restorative justice in its political connotation and its workability on the ground is political vengeance. They set up a ministry and they didn't budget for that money, you know. They went and get millions of dollars to set up a ministry for political mischief. Now, where are we going? I asked this question a thousand times. Why this is necessary? And why the trade union leaders shut them up? I understand why liars shut them up. Liars are not meddle with that. The only good thing lawyers ever do, as far as I know in the country collectively, is to introduce this uh, something Ned lecture to impress us with the brilliance. I've heard everybody is involved in charity. Well, you must compliment Rotary, the police, radio station, ministries, nurses, clubs, football groups, Everybody has a heart they do charity. I never heard the Bar Association do any charity. I ain't saying they ain't doing it. I never hear. So I don't expect them to intervene. But the trade union is a great disappointment. Because these issues are going to directly affect the economy. And based upon the NDC track record, the economy could go in free fall. Already small businesses feeling the squeeze. Well, those big business perhaps they don't affect it. I hear they talking. And most of them get massive tax break. Millions of dollars in break. But a lot of small businesses in trouble. You could have increase in social problems. And what is the justification? I ask this question over and over. The government must explain to us. What is the urgency of giving the vendors 28 days notice instead of six months? You have a project there to start now? What is the justification for giving 28 days only because the Prime Minister knows how to will power? These are the questions we ask. We are not trying to be unreasonable. We are asking the questions. We are begging journalists to ask the questions. And we know the Prime Minister is hiding from journalists. So we are asking his two favorite journalists. Because we continue to seek the interest and recognize not everybody in Grenada is affected by the NDC government. Some people in donkey glory. 
and don't expect them to complain. But the people who have lost their job, the, the women, some workers up to 19 years in the service, the vendors now, some of them 24 and 25 years in that spot, they are affected. The 31 workers from Grand Bay Estate. The workers from Mount Rule. The workers involved in the Coton Scale Pest Management Unit. All the people who used to get a part time job in the bushing program. All of them are affected. The money is now that can squeak. And the caregivers that Andy and his ministry is terrorizing. What is the justification for that? Because the government claim money is not a problem. So the government have money. The government just spent 22 point something million dollars on tourism. Every activity Carico have, they give them over hundred thousand dollars. Every activity they have. And nothing is wrong with that because the government is not broken. The CBI program is doing extremely well. So why this government is deliberately disadvantaging these people? If the government is doing so well with the economy, what is the justification of changing the Muro Saparandai of the housing program from rent to own to go in the bank if, if you have money and buy. But we have to remember the NDC is a very insensitive government. And based upon the track record, every time they come in power, they immediately go after people in the lower income group. They continue to set up sham boards so that they could do what they want. And I think they have to go in parliament to legalize illegality. Because they gave contracts. Some people sign the contract after they do the work. And now they're, in, they're going to parliament to legalize these illegal acts. We're back with you again tomorrow between 12 and 1 when we have another opportunity to punch and perhaps you might talk about Holy Week. Thank you very much.